Hello everyone, welcome to my full ant room tour video. In this video, I'll be going over almost all of my ant colonies with a quick video about each and a little bit of information. This video is also my 500 subscriber special, as you can see by the title. Uh, so I just wanted to thank everyone for helping me hit that number and just for all the support along the way. Some of the colonies in this video have never been featured on this channel before, so if you want to see something new, then be sure to stick around to the end. To start things off, I'd like to introduce my new Novomesser Coccarelli colony. These guys are in a vertical form aquarium, and as you can see, they're doing very well. This queen got her first workers about six weeks ago, and the colony has since been exploding in population. These guys are great climbers, so they have no use climbing up and down the back of the nest and using all of the space available for them. They even like to hang upside down uh, and carry small balls of eggs and larvae in their mouth. Next up is my Campanotus semitastaceus colony. I found this queen under a rock with two workers on May 22nd of this year, and the colony has since exploded to be around 80 workers. At this point, they are getting ready to hibernate, uh, with only a few more pupae left that need to close before they're fully ready. Their nest is a form aquarium with white sand coating, and it really does a good job of showing off their, their amazing coloration. Next up, we have my Trachymermex septentrionalis colony. These guys were the first fungus growers that I ever kept when I dug them up on May 21st, 2020. They have two queens, although I haven't seen either of them in a while. As you can see, they have a ton of workers, and they even made a late earlier this year. The fungus is a bit small right now. They seem to be preparing for hibernation, and when they hibernate, they shrink their fungus down to a tiny pellet. So I'm expecting that to happen within the next couple of weeks. Here I have my Solenopsis validia scula colony. These guys are a tiny thief ant species with an interesting brownish color, which you can especially see on the queen. Right now they're slowing down for hibernation as well, with just a few more pupae needing to a close. If you're wondering why I have so many ants that hibernate, it's because a lot of my colonies are from the mountains in Arizona, which have a much more temperate climate. This is my Pogonomermex Wachaconis colony, and as you can see, they're doing absolutely amazing with a whole mountain of brood. The queen in this colony can be pretty hard to spot, but I was able to get a pretty good view of her in this video. These queens are called Brachypteris, which means that they have non-functional wings and actually just run around during their mating flights, and the males will chase after them. It's pretty fun to see. These guys will not be hibernating this year, uh, and we'll just keep churning out brood like crazy all year long as long as I keep them heated.
Next, we have my Lyomatopum apiculatum colony. This species is crazy, and their queens are some of the largest ants found in the United States. Right now, all of the workers are small. However, in mature colonies, they can get up to be around the size of formica workers. As you can see, they have a ton of brood, mostly pupae and eggs, and they'll just continue to grow like crazy throughout their whole lifespan. These colonies will get well into the six digits of workers, although I don't think I'm ever going to let mine get that big. Next up is my Campanotus mina colony. This is a fairly unique species of Campanotus in the subgenus Myrmobrachys, and this colony has six queens, although many of the queens got scared by the light and they're trying to hide from me. I caught these queens on July 14th of this year, and they've been growing very quickly, as you'd expect of a colony with six queens. Here we have one of my favorite colonies, my Fedoli micula, a super tiny Fedoli species, with the minors being around one and a half millimeters and the majors only being three and a half. Despite being so small, their bimorphism is really good, and these colonies can get pretty large too. These were one of the first Fedoli colonies that I had when I caught their queen on March 18th, 2020. Earlier this year, they even made a whole bunch of queen elates. Next we have my Dory Myrmex bicolor, which have again been another real favorite of mine. Typically ant keepers aren't too fond of this genus, however this colony of mine has been great to keep, with the added benefit of looking really nice with their strong bicoloration. I caught this queen on August 30th of 2020, and despite me recently reducing their feeding to keep the colony smaller, they've still got quite a lot of brood. Up next, we have my Acromyrmex versicolor in their Formisquarium XL. This colony has six queens, which were all caught on September 1st, 2020. They absolutely love this nest, as they can hang their fungus from the ceiling very easily. So far, they definitely haven't grown as fast as they could, but they're still doing very well either way. On arthropodantics.com, we sell a bunch of equipment for these guys, including nests and a food mix. So if you keep this species, it might be worth your time to check that out. Up next, we have another absolute favorite of mine, which is my Fedoli obtuso spinosa. I found this colony under a rock on April 24th of this year, and they've since exploded to now have well over a thousand workers. This species is pretty special, as they are one of the few Fedoli species in the world to have super majors, which you should be able to see in this video.
My other trimorphic Phaidoli species, and probably my favorite colony in this video, is my Phaidoli rhea. These are the largest species of Phaidoli in the world, with the queen being around 17 millimeters and their supermajors reaching as large as 12 millimeters. I caught this queen on July 20th of this year, and her colony already has several hundred workers. No supermajors from them just yet, but you should expect a video on my channel when these guys do eventually get their supermajors. Here we have my Myrmecocystis mendax colony. This queen only got one worker in founding, so she's definitely going to take quite a bit of effort to get a strong colony going. Still, these are one of Arizona's largest Myrmecocystis species, so I'm very excited to keep them. Here is a Formica perpellosa colony, a small but very pretty Formica species. I caught this queen under a rock right before she got her first workers in August of this year and now her colony is doing very well. Here is a small Campanotus vafer colony, which is an oddly large Festinatus group Campanotus. She only has one worker, but still seems to be doing very well. Here I have a two for one with two different Fidoli colonies, I have no idea what species either of them are, but both colonies have three queens. Despite being completely different species, I often lump them together due to the similarity of having three queens. One species is much larger than the other, however, both are a very fine part of my collection. Here's an interesting dual queen Campanotus vicinus colony. These guys are great. Having two of the largest Campanotus queens in Arizona together in one colony is great. They're nearly ready for hibernation. They only got two workers in their first year, but hopefully next year with two queens, the colony will grow like crazy. Next up is my Fidoli pellifera colony. I excavated this colony on April 7th, 2020, and since then they've done very well. As of now, their colony is a bit smaller than usual, since I've been cutting back their feeding to focus on my more interesting Fidoli. Despite this, they're still making a late for the second time, and they've got a ton of their big-headed majors. Another one of my all-time favorites is my Polyergus tapafi colony. These slave-making ants are not only quite rare, but are one of the largest Polyergus species, with the queen being around 12 millimeters. I found this queen under a rock in May of this year, where she was in a colony of her host species, Formica nava. She had no biological workers at the time, but now has well over a hundred. I have a video of them doing a slave raid on my channel, so go check that out.
Next up is a tiny Pogodomyrmex barbatus colony. These guys are Arizona's largest Pogodomyrmex species, but they've only got five workers for now. Next is a Pogodomyrmex rugosus colony, very similar to the P. barbatus from before, but much darker in coloration. I dug up this colony yesterday, and they have eight workers. The queen likely flew earlier this year, so her colony was still quite small. Up next is my Novomesser albicitosis colony. I caught this queen on August 3rd, 2020, and in the last 14 months, she's gotten a colony of several thousand workers. I actually haven't seen the queen in several months, partially due to the nest itself, but also the workers love to hang out on the glass and smear trash all over it. Nevertheless, these guys are certainly very interesting to keep and have been a favorite colony of mine throughout the last year or so. And last, but certainly not least, is my Ada Mexicana. This is easily the largest colony I have ever kept, likely having over 100,000 workers at this point. Surprisingly, the queen is still visible, and she likes to hang out here on the outside of the fungus. Their setup spans 17 feet from one end to another, and has eight nesting chambers, seven of which are in use. Every day this colony will process around one gallon of plants to feed their fungus. Keeping them has certainly been a blessing and a curse, because despite being absolutely awesome, they also love to escape, and will attempt to break out of their setup at least once a week. This is especially bad when they are successful while I'm gone or asleep, as I'll wake up or come home to find thousands of adder workers trailing all over my floor. Despite this, I still love the colony and think they're one of the most unique species in my collection.